It has been a very exhausting week. I struggled with what to write in this week's blog as I am not feeling it. I feel mentally drained, emotionally distressed, anxious, and at times lonely. In my past life, Certain circles of influence would have me see a therapist, but for now, meditating and prayer for understanding do seem to be working fairly well. As most people are aware, there is another conflict in Israel. In an abomination that caused desolation, I don't tackle the ongoing issue of a complicated series of events that raises its ugly head every few years about a country that few of us understand. I do, however, tackle something more sinister, propaganda from the mainstream media. We are under an incredible amount of programming, and I feel that it is almost unbelievable that so many people still trust the MSM, especially after what has been going on over the past 42 months. The armchair warriors keep me in the loop, what's being said on their favorite social media feeds. Everyone is convinced that their news feeds are the most accurate and that we are on the winning side of information. So what are we going to do about it? Anyone who visits Israel is told that the West Bank and Gaza Strip are off limits, as you never know when someone will bomb themselves in protest. It's dangerous, they say. You'll get hurt, they say. Those Muslim radicals hate the infidel, they say. So we rely on the MSM to give us the news from these dangerous territories, and rarely, if ever, do we ever try to understand why Palestinian radicals would feel the need to kill. Short history lesson. It has been said that in AD 638, in the month of February, a friend of Muhammad, creator of Islam, named Salif Omar, entered Jerusalem, riding on his white camel straight to the site of the Temple of Solomon. Omar is said to have been shocked at the filth and rubble that lay strewn about the Temple Mount. For most accounts, of this historical day, there was nothing happening on the Temple Mount, and there was no resistance to Omar and his army claiming the site as their own. It was desolate. Afterwards, Omar set about clearing the site, which made way for the Dome of the Rock, which is still there to this day. I need to reaffirm why there was no resistance by the Jews or the Christians who were living in Jerusalem at the time. For Christians, it was widely accepted that when the physical temple was destroyed, there was no need to worship in a building that does not contain God. Jesus was clear that the kingdom of God is within. The Holy Spirit resides in the temple, your body. For the Jewish nation, however, it may be a bit more difficult to understand. I am not sure of the history of the Jewish leaders of the time of Omar AD 638, but I do know that after the Roman takeover in AD 70 of Jerusalem, there seems to be a lot of assimilation into other cultures and nations. This may be an interesting history lesson to dive into, but for the sake of your time, I will move on. Shortly after World War II, there were many mumblings about creating a Jewish homeland in Israel once again. This fulfilled a much-anticipated prophecy found in Ezekiel 36.24, which states, For I will take you from the nations, gather you from all the lands, and bring you into your land. Ah, but wait, there's more. Ezekiel 36.25-27 through 27 says this, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart also I will give to you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments, and do them." It is not a nation with borders, as you can clearly see. The problem is that the Zionist mindset is this. In order for the Messiah to return to earth and make everything right in a chaotic world, a third temple must be built. This should be a huge red flag for anyone who accepts this type of indoctrination, especially those who call themselves the children of God or Jesus' followers. I know that it is very hard for most people to grasp when faced with so much killing, anger, hate, and so on. Wanting to rid the world of evil is an honorable characteristic. 
But who are the evil people in the Middle East? The Palestinians, who had lived in the land now occupied by the state of Israel for over 12 centuries? Or the hostile takeover of the Zionists, granted by the United Nations in May 1948? It should be clear, if you are a follower of love, unity, and oneness found within the teaching of Jesus, that peace and love are not achieved by war and hate. We do not unite when we are arguing over things we don't understand. We should be genuinely concerned for the Palestinians who have been forced to live in a fenced-in area of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, who live under martial law with very little hope. We should be equally concerned about soldiers that operate under the Israeli government that are just doing their job. I failed this week in doing what I profess such as, did we bridge our differences with someone this week? Did we hug someone with a genuine, I care for you? Did we help a complete stranger because they needed food, clothing, or shelter? It starts with the man in the mirror to make a change everlasting. We can all be a vessel for genuine change.